从今天开始，我们和两位德国专业乐迷一起看《月下大结局》。他们是西方现代音乐活字典，冷峻哲人于里安。Uh, I think I have a pretty diverse interest in music. 身长两米，最爱重型音乐，巨人鼓手麦克斯。I guess I, my rating will be probably pretty pretty low. <笑>这一轮他们俩的状态是。My heart is dead and empty. My soul is crushed. <笑><笑> so what? What? <笑> what? <笑> what? <笑> what? <笑> 他们猜测观众排名，猜对多的那位获得惊喜大奖。Amazing，口红键盘，口红键盘。哇哦！大奖究竟花落谁家？嗨，大家好，我是表情银行乐队的思雨。Hey, 大家好，我是表情银行的聪聪。Hi, I'm Yuyan. Hi, I'm Max. Okay, what's wrong with your hand, Max? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. The other one. Oh, this one. Yes. Um, I was driving an e-scooter, like a like a just, but not sitting, standing. I think there's no real. Chamoto. I don't know. And then I fell off. So it's the 骑上我心爱的小摩托 Exactly. Fall, fall off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then nothing happened. It's good. I just have this like thing on my hand. Yeah. Kind of looks. He's fine. Don't but it worry. kind of looks great. You know, it's kind of I'm I'm dangerous now. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. No, no. Okay. Now, uh, I want to tell you about our prize today. I'll show you the award. I'll take it now. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Special award. I'm so excited. Oh, okay. I think you you open it yourself because it has has a pa- package here. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can open. Guess what's this? Yeah, try to guess what it is. I mean, this looks great. I would be happy to only have this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay then. Maybe, maybe the loser maybe can the, get yeah, the bag. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> great. Good. Yeah. No, okay. I'm happy to lose. Okay. It looks like. Okay. I hold it. You open it. It looks like a keyboard. What? Mm. How do? Oh, what? <gasps> wow! <laughs> okay. What? It's amazing. Lipstick. Lip, lipstick. Yeah, it looks like a, it looks like a makeup palette. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Which color do you like? Like you every could... color. <laughs> <laughs> But is it is it mechanical? Does it have switches? Yeah, it's mechanical. Yeah. Oh my god! What? This is the greatest prize we ever had by far. <laughs> yeah. by far. We're really motivated now. Yes. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, sure. just don't do this random thing today. No, today not. Yeah, I mean, just try to win chances. Are maybe, but I didn't. I didn't <laughs> prepare. I didn't prepare. First band. Okay, first band. Let's win Papa some keyboard. Hyper Slash. Oh yes. Okay. The girl fall in love with the game. It's the title. Ah, great. <laughs> Okay, hyper slash back to form. <laughs> I mean, I was I, <clears throat> I was thinking about what I said last time, and I think the most the thing that was most difficult for me was that it was so uncontrasted. Okay. Because in this song, they also 
had the, the cheesy moment and the, <laughs> you are my hero and the the the, the things which have also been in the last thing, but here it's, it's this contrast, it's mm. contrast between the parts, mm -hmm. the mix, the like the wild mesh of styles mm. that I love about them. So I mm -hmm. think this was why last time I was a little bit disappointed because it was not... No heavy parts last time. Not, necessarily, not even not heavy parts, but also no real different parts. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess... Um, it's, it's personal for me, but, but to me this, this mashup, this uncontrolled... Also with the, with the celebrity, this was so great mm. because it, was, it, even, it added even another style in, this, in, in, in the catalog yes. of Hyper Slash styles, mm -hmm. which, which was why it was so great. And here again, like wildly going through every direction they could get in, into one song, mm. mm -hmm. but good, <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, great outfits. I mean, everyone. Mm. Uh, the, I love the drummer's <laughs> the drummer's head. Mm -hmm. I said this a million times, but what is what stands out to me the most is that even though they make this meshing of things, mm -hmm. they still have this very true to the heart, genuine hardcore feeling. Especially with the second singer when he sings and with the riffs they play, mm -hmm. it's not this. Oh, we take a little bit of metal and mm -hmm. put it here, like play a metal riff. But it's like this to the core kind of feeling because mm. there's like this one second I can hear converge this like in the <laughs> system to the bone kind of mm. hardcore yes. uh, uh, thing and then comes the next part like <laughs> over the top uh, cheesy auto-tuned mm -hmm. but it's mm -hmm. like so good something that I, I can I've never heard from any band Hyper Slash was super nice and sent us t-shirts mm, this yeah. one is a huge t-shirt it actually fits me yeah. <laughs> this is very maybe difficult maybe it's the difficult only thing. one in China maybe it's only XXL the <laughs> only t-shirt ever I'm printed sure it is. Yeah. you just mentioned the lyrics I, I really like the lyrics this time mm -hmm. uh, they yes. kind of like very clearly tell a story in a very simple way that uh, I think a lot of people our age can relate to, yes, even yes, though yes. it's Definitely. even though it's so simple. This song really reminded me of Sax Club of this oh. Swedish synth band. Synth band. For me, it was Ghetto Card. Yeah, it's similar. So, yeah. <laughs> the type <coughs> of fast pace double bass rhythm uh, combined with like synth. Music. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Even though Slugsmiles Club isn't anywhere close to metal, they also have this like blast beat element. Yeah, just in, in eight bit. In eight bit, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's always this contrast between very hairy part and cheesy parts. Yeah, melodic makes, parts makes it kind of a signature for those bands. Yeah, I really yeah. like that the lyrics are kind of uh, in, in align with the music. <laughs> yes. right? like the heavy part. Like, the heavy part in the second part, like dun 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 dun, yeah. and then she's saying something like, "Oh no, I don't have batteries anymore. Yeah, no battery. <laughs> Give me the charger." Yeah. And then here you have the charger, <laughs> and then yeah. go back to a, a kind of relaxed part. Yeah, yeah. They have Aku. There's, yeah, there's, we have Aku now. <laughs> there's one. There's one album from uh, Horse the Band that does that a lot, where they have mm -hmm. they have a lot of songs that are about specific video games, and they also do this kind of storytelling where mm -hmm. they. Yes. Uh, have this narrative that goes along with the music. I like just hear daily work is cumbersome and I'm on board. Next band is Fuluto. All the great bands. Fiat, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fiat. No, 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 nylon.
Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, here's something really inter- I, f- I find really interesting about Furu Show. Mm-hmm. If you just watch the uh, second round performance and then the third round performance, you could think that they are like a very dramatic, bombastic band. Yeah. But when you listen to their records as studio music, it's much more scaled back, minimalist, but it works just as well. And this was like more like record Fulu show mm. with the nylon guitar. Really, really glad for a good nylon guitar representation. Mm-hmm. Um, Sorry, but I have to say, they are not always like that on their records. Not like, always. But mm-hmm. if you listen to me, yeah. Yeah. give me the one. Yeah, the yeah that's. Okay. Yeah, yeah, some of them are uh, the more electronic. Yeah, it's very full production. Yeah, like, very electronic. Yeah. Thank you. But like, what I mean is the all the show elements that the second and the third round have. For, for the second round, the uh, the cover song had all these um, style shifts. Yes. And also this bombastic <coughs> stage. Uh, mm-hmm arrangement with like large monitors Mm -hmm. and elaborate outfits Mm -hmm. usually there's a huge harp Mm -hmm. and those are all like very uh, eye-catching centerpieces Mm -hmm. that draw a lot of attention Mm -hmm. but in the first show not you would say first show was like a little bit between the two the first show if you listen to the song on the record you can tell that it's a little bit different from the show like for example in in, uh, on the record the uh, first song the chifunga um, that's the on the record. It is with a nylon guitar, and then they performed it with the uh, harp. Harp, yeah, okay. And they had this. They also had these like more elaborate costumes. And this was uh, more like the first show, but even more scaled back, and maybe a little bit more like some of the songs from the record. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like the key shift. Uh, gave yes. the gave the song a really yes. new feel. Mm-hmm. And also the way they went back into the minor key was mm-hmm. really smooth and subtle. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, it's a terz uh, relation, like a mm. third interval relation to the original key. Okay. That mm-hmm. why it works so well, kind of. Oh, I see, yeah. And I think this is also something they have uh, in common with Sigur Ross. Sigur Ros mm-hmm. as studio music is not that elaborate, but then when they perform live, they might have these like a huge stone marimba or something Mm -hmm. and they will do a performance with that and the music works just as well yeah you can tell that their music is if you strip it down to the bare bones it works just as well yes okay i have one question the in the very beginning and the very end her very deep voice was it the microphone was it like Uh, a special microphone i really want to talk about it and can she sing no 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 hit the Uh, spot it's, yes. a, it's a TC, um, it's a TC a, Helicon yeah. Perform VE uh, effect. This is really smart to develop a gear into your style, like mm-hmm. your own style. Mm-hmm. This is a very constant uh, like style yeah. in their perform. It's a, it's yeah. a effect pedal that has a built-in uh, vocoder, mm-hmm. but has also a lot of other effects, like reverb and, and synthesizer. Like you can make the world like robotic, and they use it also as a harmonic device. You know, like in Mecha, you can always hear like there is a fifth interval mm-hmm. uh, above her singing voice, yeah. and it can also do that. And you know, this pedal is probably a very big part of their signature yes, sound. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think, even though you are probably right in any musical and in any educated sense. To me, it's not what you said. To me, it doesn't work as much in this, like... To me, it, it's more like the first three and then the second, the last ones. Mm-hmm. Because they were, to me, very representative in the stage setup, in the outfits. Very scaled back, very okay. normal outfits. Mm-hmm. And just playing, like, very bare bones or scaled back the music. And, of course, it's beautiful. This song was beautiful. It is nice to listen to the singing, the relationship between the voices, how the, the, like, super nice. But to me, it loses a lot of the special moment that I had in the beginning with the band. Maybe maybe because I look at it also superficially, maybe I'm very impressible by the set pieces Mm -hmm. and the outfits and, like, Mm -hmm. in the second show, for example, the shifts in styles, something that I really liked. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and with the celebrity, the, the, the interplay between the crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. piano and what they did it was very special to me. So maybe what made the made or makes the band so so special and good to me is always a lot related with the with the stuff that's maybe not so much in the music itself. Okay. So it's probably very personal. Um, mm -hmm. But like last time, this time really beautiful but didn't blew me away to okay. any in any degree. Yeah, I understand. Okay. I understand. Yeah, but for me, I think if in, in this uh, competition context, what you said made, made, a, made a lot of sense. But uh, if you listen to it as a like music piece, I, for me personally, really love to enjoy this kind of song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some of the songs I like to listen to uh, better the, from the record version than yes, from yes. the live version. Even though I have good memories for the live version, and it really catches you to, to just listen to it every day, I, I would prefer the record version. Yeah, like last time you said, there's a lot of subtle things yes. in it, and you can just study it. You yeah. can just deeply sink into you slowly. Yeah. It feels really good. Yeah. For me, it's like that. Maybe, maybe I can mention uh, Nini has a really nice, beautiful, well kept nylon guitar player fingernails wow. Wow, she's oh my. Good. yeah she's and so she's good using, at that the, because you said subtle things she's yeah. using them too she, they're not just mm -hmm. for show she's using them to give the strings different types of texture when she uses just the one finger to, to strum yes. or when she uses, she uses her thumb really hard on yes. the uh, deeper strings mm -hmm. it creates different textures and, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, also the intro she plays it's very so expressive good. yeah you know, the tempo shift mm -hmm. and this, and it, it, the phrasing. Yeah. The phrasing. Wow. Yeah, it reminded me a little bit of like the last of us. Theme. Yes. <laughs> or, yes. Or, or, well, do you know Barber? You know. It's called, called I think Gustavo Santo Lala. Yeah, a lot and, of. Yeah, a lot of those emotions came, you know, I had in mind yeah. when I listened to this. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's Quincy Big Shark. Oh, long time no see. <laughs> And I liked a few parts, especially the rap part, even though I don't know if I really liked it or if I think it was good or if I just thought, God, something else. <laughs> uh, then comes the guitar kind of solo that goes into this trumpet kind of solo, which mm -hmm. was overall probably three seconds long, but also <laughs> quite refreshing. It reminded me for the three seconds of Mars Volta, mm -hmm. where he, they have this interplay. There's a one song... Uh, where they have this like com this conversation between trumpet and guitar, where the guitar would be like, and then the trumpet would be like. I like the rock star ending. I had the feeling that they, also what I talked about last time. I mean, they have been voted back in, but they. I guess they knew or they they think that they will also not continue. Kind of, it felt like this because on the one hand they played like the super standard usual stuff, like. 
I remember what I said when I first saw them, this kind of commercial music for a festival. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and this is kind of exactly that. Yeah, it's true. like Especially the chorus. Mm. Yeah, it's the chorus was the worst part, but to me overall it was like pop rock, perfect pop rock. Yes, they perfect. are pop rock. Yeah, but yeah. it's like yes. it's like this deep. Which is okay. They probably mm. too. Sorry, the people. You know, it's it's my it's my. Okay, opinion. I have a, I have a question because I suspect there's something deeper going on here. Uh, this song really reminded me of Me Without You. The thing about Me Without You is that they have a very very distinct kind of lyrics, where the where the lyrics really naturally flow with the speaking rhythm, uh, to the rhythm of the music. And I felt like the even though I don't understand the Chinese lyrics, mm -hmm. they they did that in this song too. Like the the singing felt almost as if, as if it was the same rhythm as you would have if you were speaking those words. Mm. Um, yeah. Maybe you Kinda can tell makes me. Sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this this is something that reminded me also of me without you. I I really didn't like the chorus. I, I liked it okay the first time, and then the, the third time I was like really over it. Yeah, I also felt it was dragging in the end. It was a little bit too long. For us, it's it's a very good, genuine pop song that yeah. has a lot of details. The trumpet, you know, the brass section, I really you know, the tambourine, the, the guitar I playing. I liked everything else, I just didn't like the chorus. I mean, and the me, tambourine. Me, I know, like, the tambourine is just a small thing. But it's not a small thing, but it's just something that is, that is not special. A tambourine is like in every kind of the song. Someone comes on the stage and plays a tambourine. It's not it's, like... It's, it's not like it's you have to use it animal. well. You cannot use it in yeah. any song. Yeah, and it's tambourine all, must have it's a all well purple, arranged. Purple. Yes. Each and every band who plays in this show is... No, I don't think so. Not each one is like well arranged as them. Like I said so often, when I say something, is I don't like it. It doesn't mean it's not yeah. a professional. Sure, sure, sure. professional. I think every time the the like brass section for this band is really special because last time you mm -hmm. said this uh, very experimental. Do you remember the saxophone playing like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. kind of yeah. thing? Because that song is about uh, the the mammoth. Mammoth. Mammoth, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's designed. Yeah, mammoth it's it's, mammoth it's yeah. well designed. And in this song, the the I think the melody is really catchy, really singable. Yeah, catchy, but yeah. catchy is for me not. Catchy is really important. good in in like pop rock. Yes. It's, just, yeah. it's really hard to do. No? Maybe maybe, maybe it is yeah. because I have never heard like uncatchy pop rock because it's just not successful. You know, successful. Okay. You know, and I don't listen deeper in this direction okay. in this genre. So I mm -hmm. probably only heard good pop rock or like yeah. successful pop rock. Yeah, so maybe. I cannot say that I cannot. I have. I don't have a comparison. Oh, no. But I have like one thing because I felt. Did you also think that she looked quite tired? Oh yeah. Like, very, <laughs> but I think it was the makeup. She had really heavy mm. fake yeah, lashes. Yeah, it was very. It was very yeah. like you couldn't see the eyes. Actually, the uh, this revival round is a, a little bit controversial. Mm. That mm. two bands are voted back in, and one of those bands is Quincy Big Shard. On the last night of the, of this uh, voting, yeah. voting last last night suddenly, suddenly they, they become the second uh, place. So they have a lot of votes. Suddenly they get a lot of votes. Yeah, and people are pissed because of that and are blaming the band for <laughs> Why? it. Why? Yeah. What? It's really yeah. ridiculous, right? It's ridiculous. That's right? completely yeah. ridiculous. Yes, even and if there was something going on, that's probably not on the band. It's so ugly. I, I, you know, every time I watched Quincy Big Big Sharks Sharks shows. I cried like two times. <laughs> I literally I cried because yeah. I I feel so connected with with mm. her. I, she's like me, you know. She's yeah. so much similar, like with me. I feel this uh, like restrained and caged feeling of mm. her. On top of that, they have this uh, people, internet people blaming them, and I feel like why? Why is this? Why is this? Does it matter? Because they are doing to me genuine music. They are doing. So they put a lot of effort into their music. You can hear the details mm -hmm. and are in the arrangement. And they're really taking seriously. They take it seriously, yeah, and they just tell. do their best as musicians. But yeah. people still blame them. I, yeah. I can't understand that. Okay, as a woman, as a like, also I'm 30 years old, so I, I really connected with her. Yeah. 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 So it's so hard for a woman to to be in this like leader position. No, mm. no one. If you no make, one deserves like, this, right? Yeah. The yeah. most boring music or whatever, no one deserves <laughs> yeah. this. Yes. And it doesn't even matter what kind of music you make or what... Mm. No, that's not fair. Yeah, that's something <laughs> I really want to talk about in this episode. But can we, like, very quickly... 
determine what what was her lipstick or what was that? <laughs> I think maybe this one. It was no, really no, it was bright. like this. Like this? Yeah. No, so it was like this. Was pretty red. This one? No. No, it was this or this. Full idiot. Full idiot. Remember full idiot? Mm -hmm. uh, barely. <laughs> barely. Uh, the singer with the with tattoos. The, with the yeah. tattoos. Yeah. yeah. big contrasts for me <laughs> in uh, some way this song felt similar to the first song mm -hmm. in that it, the, all the instruments were really understated the drums did some weird things in the beginning yeah. but then not so much <laughs> and even even in the beginning it was kind of subtle and small you mean the snare right yeah yeah, yeah it's a re weird groove to me yeah, yeah it's just weird it's really cool and you think it's cool you like yes. it? Oh, you like oh, you like it? Yeah, it? that was that was a highlight. I said definitely. the snare. Yeah. yeah. It was I like the snare? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay. okay. Yeah, continue. Uh, and then this, these are like the parts that I didn't like. The fact that it was uh, so singing focused, not that much um, experimentation, or not that many different styles or contrasts. But then the climax was um, really strong. I felt like. It was uh, it worked really well for the song. It had like a slow build, mm -hmm. and then it kind of had a really, really steep rise at the at the climax, and that worked really well for me. Uh, but other than that, I like through most of the half first half of the song, I um, felt really disconnected to it. I had trouble keeping my attention to it, and then I kind of woke up from the climax a little bit. Mm. So I like this better than their first performance. Um, and I, I definitely think that this song is much more suited to a live performance than the first song. Mm -hmm. But I still didn't like it as much as other bands. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I agree with you, though. Surprisingly, it kind of got to me. <laughs> it got mm. to my heart. Wow. Um, what you described with like difficulties keeping attention, I had this with Queen C Big Shark, but mm. here I, I, I didn't have this. I was okay. like really in in, in there. Um, but, but I also really liked the guitar. I mean, <coughs> you had the spotlight on the guitar, and then it was like, yeah, okay, that's not very special to like mm. full on spotlight. This is the guitar <laughs> moment, and he kind of continues to play the just four notes, yeah. Um, but then in then when this when this came back into the song. I really, I really like, like this melody that that the guitar played, and, uh, and it and it's really, okay, it was really okay. So I, I, I really like the snare because usually, I mean, it because it's so strange. Usually, usually you have this like da da, yeah. like when you play this kind of yeah. music. That this, but here it's like da da. More like. It was not on purpose, but of course it was on purpose, but it sounded like he kind of didn't hold yeah. his stick. So <laughs> was like, a mistake, right? Yeah, but yes. then he repeated it. Maybe he maybe he made a mistake and then he integrated <laughs> yes. it to the song. Maybe. Um, this kind of oh, this kind of works. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Now I have to stick with it. <laughs> yes, it was so like like jumping out yes. of the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because something like, like a drum, like bass drum or kick drum, it shouldn't grab your attention too much. Yeah, I mean, Me if you do that with with the bass drum, usually it's not that it's not that hearable. But yes. the snare is like really in your face. So okay, true. there's this thing. Yes, 
sorry for another short story, which is also <laughs> up about the Mars Volta. There's this one song, and I, I, I told you sometimes that mm -hmm. there's one song on Better of Goliath, I think it's, I think it's Iliana, mm -hmm. where he plays, the, I'm 100% sure that this is a mistake, he plays one bass drum kick, mm -hmm. one hit is like mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when the song starts, mm -hmm. I wait for this moment, not because I want to, but mm -hmm. I know this moment is coming. This moment is coming, <laughs> where he just make like, like boom, boom. Mm -hmm. Instead of boom boom, you know. Uh, and, but this mm. is so like ingrained into me. This moment, in this <laughs> I always know when it when it's there. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. But to me, far more enjoyable than Queen's Big Shark, for example. Mm. Okay. I was more engaged and like in it and could feel it, kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Short break. Short break. Yeah. Break. Okay. Uh, sure.